So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive in the past for Olympus's history reviewed. The origins of Olympus camera begin in 1919 with the founding of the company by Takashi Yamashita. During this time, their sole goal was to produce domestic microscopes and thermometers. During the early 1900s, Japan imported all of its microscopes and other medical instrumentation from other countries, most notably Germany. Yamashita set off with the clear ambition to rival the quality of these foreign manufacturers and ultimately eliminate outsourcing. And it's during this time they established their later acclaim as a research and medical instrumentation manufacturer. In 1921, they register Olympus as their trademark name, and it's also during this year they released their first microscope under the Tokiwa brand. In 1931, they established the Olympus Tokyo logo. During this time, they also began to sell camera lenses, though with little success as they sold them separately without accompanying camera bodies. So instead, they later decided to make a camera around the lenses they manufactured, now under the name of Olympus. This choice departed from the conventional thinking of the time as many Japanese manufacturers built cameras replicating German designs. Nevertheless, they go forth, and in 1936, they launched their first camera, the Semi-Olympus. It's also at this point they established the development of Zyko photographic lenses, in 1948, the Olympus 35 launched as their first 35mm film camera and the first sold in the Japanese market. Olympus developed this camera to meet two essential requirements, speed and compactness. Its small form but quick and successive shooting made the camera immediately famous. The following year, they renamed the company to Olympus Optical Co. Ltd. And in 1952, a breakthrough camera comes with the release of the Olympus Flex. The Flex was their first twin lens reflex camera developed in response to the rise of the twin reflex movement in the post-Japanese market. In 1955, they released the Olympus Wide, a 35 variant designed specifically for wide angle photography. This camera proved to be yet another highly popular release, which fueled the subsequent wide-angle camera explosion. This was the camera that finally made taking wide-angle photographs possible and not something available to those who could afford expensive, exchangeable lens cameras. In 1958, they launched the Olympus Pen, their first and only innovative half-frame camera. The Pen is acclaimed even today for its compact and sleek lines which at the time were revolutionary. Not only that, it could also take 72 shots without the need for reloading a 35 millimeter cassette. This release set yet another trend and many companies immediately began to follow suit and to produce their own half frame cameras. In 1963, they released the Pen F, their first half frame SLR system, now with the support of a 20 exchangeable lens ecosystem, and in 1968, they had another breakthrough with establishing the Olympus Corporation of America in the United States. During this year, they also released the Trip 35, a compact camera that combined ease of use with performance at a low price. The Trip 35 ultimately remains their best selling camera for the following two decades. In 1971, they released the Olympus 35DC which featured the first programmable automatic exposure and automatic flash system, helping new photographers achieve precise exposure automatically. The following year, they experienced yet another breakthrough release with the launch of the OM-1, a compact SLR, and the next year we see the launch of their OM-35 SLR film system. The combination of these two releases proved to be challenge to Nikon's F, the workhorse camera, for professional photographers at the time. The OM system was revolutionary because it showed that performance could accompany a small form factor. It quickly rose as the world's smallest and lightest 35mm SLR and a highly valued camera today. In 1975, we see the release of the OM-2, the first camera to feature a TTL metering system. 
In 1983, they released the Olympus AFL, the first camera powered by a lithium battery and the first 35 millimeter camera to support flash sync at all shutter speeds. The same year, they released the OM4, the first camera equipped with multi-spot metering to achieve balanced exposures when shooting in high contrast scenes. In 1986, they released the Olympus Infinity, the world's first fully automatic compact camera. In 1997, they released the Kamita C1400L, the first affordable digital camera to feature a 1.41 megapixel progressive CCD sensor. 2003, the renaming of the company to Olympus Corporation and the launch of the E1, a digital SLR camera now with interchangeable lenses. The release of the E1 single-handedly pioneered the four-third system we hear of today and allowed them to design subsequent bodies and lenses specifically for the digital age. This same year, they also released the U10 Digital, the world's first weatherproof compact digital camera. In 2006, they released the E330, the first camera to pioneer live view, allowing users to compose using the LCD, thus eliminating the need for a viewfinder. This feature combined with its tilting screen allowed for superior high or low angle shooting. Shortly after that, they created the Micro Four Thirds system we know today. And from there in 2009, they launched the Pen EP1, their first mirrorless interchangeable lens camera and launched the OMD mirrorless lineup. And it is from this point that we know Olympus as we know them today. So I hope you guys found that brief history and that overview valuable. Um, definitely digging into the research, we found some, some releases that we didn't know existed. And the reality is that Olympus is a Camry manufacturer, even though that's not necessarily what uh, the company's founded on. They, are, they do do instrumentation, medical instrumentation, um, telescopes, microscopes, um, thermometers, things of that nature. They do a lot of other stuff in, in the medical field, but uh, they create medical equipment and diagnostic equipment is what they actually create. That is the forefront of their actual business, but uh, the camera manufacturing is a big part of their heritage, even though that's not necessarily what they do from a financial standpoint to keep their company uh, fueled and alive. But they, they're the ones to pioneer so many different technologies that we know now. Um, for example, the first camera to use a CCD sensor as opposed to a CMOS, uh, that's what came before CMOS. Um, they pioneered the four thirds, the micro four thirds system. They pioneered live view. They pioneered in many respects, they pioneered weatherproofing and weather sealing bodies. Um, among a number of different other, other iterations that they, they did as well, making um, you know, TTL metering and things of that nature. And no one talks about that stuff. Um, you know, I feel like they don't, they, they don't get to deserve uh, the rep that they deserve and they have incredible cameras. Um, you know, even just looking at some of the cameras that they do offer now in terms of um, specifications, you know, 4K 30p, 4K 60p, um, you know, six, seven stops of image stabilization, um, you know, dust and weather resistance bodies down to minus 20 degrees Celsius and, and all this other stuff. No one talks about that stuff and they have, <laughs> they have some of the class leading features in, in, in the photographic industry. Um, they have incredible gear uh, and we're excited to use some of that stuff in the near future. But. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if I overlooked something or I missed something covered in today's video. This is Devon Lennox. You know where to find us. Photography. <laughs> Dot com.